uh, there was a bit of news that, that happened this week. And we were excited about it uh, because at this point, she's like a friend of the pod. Uh, Karina LeBlanc, recently named new Portland Thorns general manager, former Canadian international, five World Cups, two Olympics, has played in the NWSL for three years and all of the other previous uh, women's professional leagues in the United States. Uh, she had a season under her belt with, with Portland Thorns, and uh, she was uh, head of uh, women's football over at CONCACAF since 2018, and now she's transitioning into this role. And she joined us recently on an episode of Attacking Third to talk about her potential big plans, her high hopes, her high goals for the club uh, and the league moving forward. I really enjoyed that, at least when we got to chat with her. It was a really great conversation. I mean, overall, we now we can talk a little more candid about it because Karina is not here, but um, probably one of the best people that I could think to slide into a managerial front office role for a club like Portland Thorns that is really one of the best clubs in the league. They, they won the Shield this year. They're number one in the standings heading into the playoffs. Um, uh, just so many good moving pieces and, and parts there. Um, when you think back to everything that they've been through on the field this year, like Olivia Moultrie being the youngest player um, at that club who got time on the pitch, became the youngest starter, the youngest player in the NWSL, had to jump through a few legal hoops there. Um but uh, like you mentioned, Sandra, we know Karina pretty well. We've had the pleasure of speaking with her a number of times. And she is a, a woman that just wants soccer all the time for everyone to be fun, to be equal, to be growing constantly. And that's that's really what we talked to her about in our chat that everyone should go listen to and watch on YouTube, um, that every single role that she had up until this point was uh, in a position to grow the game of, of soccer and grow the women's side of the game, uh, no matter what she did. And after she retired from the game, she knew that wasn't it for her. And she, she became involved on the other side of things as a leader. And I think, I think I think when she talks about certain things and she talks about her energy for this position and for promoting women's soccer um, and, and women's football, you can kind of get a sense that she was like goalkeeper leader person on the team. It really, it's so crazy to see that seamless transition for her from being a goalkeeper, having the whole field in front of her and, and the vision of the field being a loud goalkeeper, being a leader on teams and, and, running teams and having younger players look up to her. And now she's in this position where younger players and players in the league are looking up to her and saying, wait, you're now being a GM of a team. I can do that. That's, that's a, a path I can look forward to because so many of these players know that they can't play the game forever. <clears throat> and, and the idea that what could come next is sometimes a bit daunting for players and to know that they can stay not only involved in, in soccer, but in the NWSL and run stuff as a GM of a team. Heck yeah. So I'm pumped for Karina LeBlanc. I think, I think this role is really big for her and it comes at such a pivotal time in the league when so many things are changing and, uh, there a lot needs to be changed and a lot needs to be redone and reorganized and who better than to uh, put on the, the cap to lead the way than Karina, honestly. Yeah. I hear you on that. It was delightful talking to her and, and you're absolutely right. That was probably one of my favorite parts uh, of the conversation was how she was sharing some of the reaction al along with her own reaction to the news going public and uh People can feel free to stat check me on this, but you know we did talk about it a little bit, and that it's going to make her the the second former NWSL player mm -hmm. to be to hold the the role of of general manager. But to my understanding, she will be the first Black woman uh, to be to be in that role, and for her to to come on the show and talk about that, the reaction to that, how people are already looking to that as sort of this kind of breakthrough. Uh, in the industry, let's just say, uh, and how necessary that is. And then you don't really like, you don't realize that that's the case until it finally happens. And then that sort of sits and resonates with people in a, in a bit of a different way. So I, um, you know, I wish her lots of success. Um, it's not an easy role, uh, to be in by any means at all. Um, and I'm sure we'll be covering it. I'm sure she'll, uh, come on, the show once once more in in the, in the future if if she likes but um we'll be covering Karina LeBlanc in, in a in a different angle moving forward for sure yeah and i think something else that's really 
important that she talked to us about is this whole idea of transparency in the league right now is something that there wasn't at the start of the season. Heck, there wasn't even a month ago. And now the NWSL is trying to have a bit more transparency thanks to the players asking for it. Um, and, and she told us that she flew to Portland and she met with the players in their locker room before their game, before they found this out on Twitter before they read that they had a new GM and, and she met with them and she walked into their locker room and their training rooms and said, hi, I'm here. I want to be your GM. Like, what do you guys think about this? And that to me is such a huge step forward in this league and for Portland um, that, that because this is, they are her employees and and their co-workers in a sense. And now that the players understand who is leading their club is Karina LeBlanc. And I, I, frankly, the fact that some clubs find out news, some players find out news about their clubs on Twitter after training is ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous to me. So the fact that she even had to proactively be like, I need to go meet them before they read this somewhere else. Like that's so big, but it shouldn't be so big. And the fact that she's already doing that and already off to the, on the right foot in that sense, I think that's really huge. And that just says a lot about where the future is going for women's soccer, especially in the NWSL. Here. Absolutely. It was a great interview. I hope uh, people take the time to, to take a look at it. You can, again, you can head on over to our YouTube page for the exclusive interview that we had with Karina LeBlanc from this week over at youtube.com slash attacking third.